Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report, where we talk about classical Kung Fu and its application. Today we're going to talk about this movement in the wooden dummy form, how to avoid its common mistake and how to train its application. Because it's really not a literal technique, it's a concept and principle. See you when we get back. Chris, sir, please come on in. So, in a wooden dummy, there's a movement like this, where we kind of sweep outside, charge in, ram our leg on a wooden dummy's leg, and come in upright like this. Usually that's taught like an application like this, which it kind of is, but it's really used as a third form premise. The BUG form is for an odd situation that doesn't happen really normally when we're outclassed in terms of speed and power. In this case, if the guy towers over us and it's much too tall. Not so much the height difference between me and Chris, but let's say if Chris was this tall. Under that circumstance, if Chris gives me a punch, right, and I come in and I follow the form, this might look correct, but it's actually not correct. That's a common mistake because of the range of my posture. If Chris comes in and I'm here, that looks fine only because of the height. But if he was a lot taller, let's say if I squat down a lot, and I did the same thing, this is not good for me to stand this far from a man that's a lot taller than me. Because if he throws the other shot, he can climb over anything my hands can do with all his body weight. So if a guy is that much taller than you, not Chris, but I'll squat down and simulate the difference, it's very important to overclose. In other words, get really in. So because if I get really close now, if he throws the second shot, he can't. It's really easy to punch someone shorter like this. It's hard to punch somebody here, right? It's kind of against their instinct. So once you get that close, we don't see it better on this side, Chris. Then what you can do, if you have slow footwork though, it's really hard to get in this close right away. So you climb your way in. That's a major principle in the Wing Chun knives, actually. Because the Wing Chun pole is 12 feet long. The knives are really short. So you gotta climb up the pole, right? This idea is connected to this application, where if I can't get my feet in there in time and get that close, I climb my way in with damage. So Chris comes in, I kick first and then I go in. See how? I climb my way in. You okay, Chris? Yeah. Which, maybe they'll see it better this way. You can also follow the form, but you'll notice, if you follow the form, you can't palm really hard when you're this close. It's better to use a chunk of hits. The palm's really going towards the groin. Like if Chris hits me, really hit here, now I get the groin, and I can throw him, right? And the throw is done because of that cylindrical idea of the groin grab, where a minute ago, instead of grabbing Chris's groin, I grab his inner thigh, and that's pretty painful. So, yeah. so you grab the groin and you bend your knees and sit down. Grab his groin, sit down, and get will fall, right? Or he comes in, you might follow the form completely, get a leg up here. Now, it's easy to do the third form sweep. So Chris come in and get like that again. If I get close, I climb my way in, right? If I want to throw him like this, it's hard to move a big man like this. But if I tilt his spine a bit, look, there's nothing holding him up. So you can do that through hitting as well. This idea is also used against a round shot. If Chris throws a hard swing, I do the tons out, it works pretty well. Or the chunky folks out. But if he's really tall, and I do the same thing, it won't work. I won't have the leverage. Swing Chris, he'll knock me right down. So under that circumstance, if the guy's really tall, you should be following the third form, the ducking and the covering. Which, you duck and cover. But Chris's arm is really fast. So for me to duck, I don't actually aim for his arm. I aim for the empty space. Maybe you'll see it better this way. Swing hard, Chris. Empty space, and then right away, when I was here, you get all your hits in on the groin grabs are here, right? Or you can work your way in. Look, now. <laughs> and then also you notice the lower stance you can use from the battle punches from the long pull, right? So a minute ago, I didn't bother ducking, I just hit. Also, if, you're, if you get stuck like that, look at his arm. You can also hit up using the two concept, and now he has no power, and then again, you can take it down, pick up the ankle, and, and you hit, right? So, when we get back, we'll talk about this a bit more. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's short demo. If you're interested in learning how to actually do this, we have a course in the Wind Demi and AdamChanKungFu.com in the full immersion section. Thank you. But before I go, I want to say one more thing. This idea of what to do against a much taller guy from a BG third form premise, 
And it wouldn't have been formed to give you a little bit of idea, just like in the third form. But in my humble opinion, I think this principle, you should really run with it if you're not average height or you live in a country where a lot of people towers over you. Under that premise, it shouldn't just be a little bit of your work. It should be the majority of your work. You should have the brains and the ability to modify your stuff and ingest your stuff to people a lot bigger. So not just in a couple of moves like I showed today, but the entire system. You should be able to run through everything you learn in Sulu and Chung Q and learn how to use it on different body types, rather than someone bigger or someone taller. It's always interesting, no matter what martial art you do, to always look at that. Because when Wing Chun was developed, just like any, a lot of the Southeastern martial arts, they were developed in an area where they were fighting people roughly their own size most of the time. And back in the day, like a few hundred years ago, unless they were very, very wealthy, most of the people in the villages stay in the same location. They were born there and they died there. But nowadays it's a lot different, right? Like especially in modern communities, like in Canada, for example, we have many people of different sizes and different races and different cultures. So you must learn how to adapt your stuff based on your body type in relativity terms, right? So keep that in mind and we'll talk about this a lot more in the next episode.